Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you are having a wonderful day. I pray that you're walking in the newness of life. You're enjoying this day that the Lord has made. And, you know, if the opportunity has presented itself, or if it does after this is over, that you tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord and invite them to know Jesus Christ. What a, what a life living for Christ is. I am grateful, my friends, to be born again. I consider it the honor, the joy, the privilege of a lifetime. When I get to heaven, you know, uh, there are people who, who sing beautiful songs and they say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to Tell him all about my troubles and tell him how I made it over and tell him about this and tell him about that. Man, listen, when you get to heaven, you're going to tell the Lord, thank you. <laughs> uh, look, look, let me tell you, one second in God's kingdom is going to pay for it all. And uh, let, me, <laughs> let me tell you, I, my big question that I have for the Lord is when I see him, and uh, I may forget it, but here's the question that I have. If I, if I, if I could ask God one thing, brother God, just one thing right now, and I'm standing before him, I would ask the Lord, the God of the Bible, why uh, were you so good to me? Praise the Lord. Now I'm not going to ask him something stupid like, what did I, what did <laughs> What good did you see in me? What did I do? No, no, no. It's not in me. That's why I have the question. It's not me. I've been me all my life. I know me. So it's not what good did you, did you find in me? Or what did I do so good to make you do this or that? See, that's false pride. And, you know, that's false humility. Oh, no. I'm the first one to admit it's not what he found in me. It's, it's him and it's how great he is and how merciful he has been. And I, I'm just so thankful. Now I have, uh, look, I've been, I've been talking, I've been sharing some communications of late because, um, uh, uh as, as, as when we a few Sundays ago, uh, went to our own company, according to Acts chapter four, and, uh, we reported uh, a communication that was given to yours truly from a woman of God whom I admire greatly, who has, uh, has uh, she, she's aware of what's going on in the kingdom. She heard from some people who had gotten delivered from the trans lifestyle and uh, they had, I guess they were still on the call list and uh, uh, they had discussed that they were going to target, target yours truly. Well, you know what I did? I took it to the Lord in prayer. My wife and I prayed about it. We prayed about it uh, uh, at uh, uh, with a, a very dear friend of mine, my chief of staff, Superintendent Apostle Tommy Quick at his church, the Promised Land, uh, uh, Spartanburg Discipleship Center, home of the Promised Land, Church of God in Christ. And then the, the service you saw aired uh, was our 11 a.m. service. We had prayer in both services. And as a matter of fact, we had a greater number of missionaries and ministers in the 8 a.m. service than what you saw in the 11. And you saw the saints come and you saw the saints pray as we told the story. And uh, uh, we, inc we incorporated uh, my son-in-law, that man of God who's going all over, crusading to keep pornography and wicked books from children and you have covered us in prayer and we thank you. And we've been hearing from people and hearing from people. Just want to read this right quick. It says, I've been listening and watching a lot of your sermons on YouTube. And I just want to tell you, keep standing up for what is right. I belong to a mainly black church where I am an associate minister, but I am a white man. And I agree a thousand percent with you on it being wrong, as wrong as can be, to have Fannie Willis up in the pulpit 
glorifying her wrongness uh, and what other courtroom would allow anybody else to act like she acted uh, like uh, she ain't got a a lick of sense. (laughs) Now, listen, this man, uh, my question was a simple one. And regardless to whether you agree uh, with uh, whether former President Trump should be tried or not, my question was a simple one. Should this be something that should be defended and talked about in a church, in a pulpit? And since uh, the heart of the relationship, as far as the church is concerned, as far as the Bible is concerned, the relationship was an adulterous relationship. So should she be talking about that in a church? And uh, is that is, is that what we're allowing our churches to devolve into? And also, uh, we began to deal with, uh, he, he, he wrote on to say, I agree with your stance on, I don't use the word gay, he does, homosexual marriage, abortion, and these clowns that don't like what God... <laughs> Don't like what God created them as and don't know if they are a man or a woman and uh, what bathroom they belong to. He's right. Thank you for your support. Uh, Sir, look at this. Uh, I have prayed for you, your family, your congregation and and whatever the enemy have planned for you to target you, to assassinate your character, it's going to befall them instead. I know God's word does not go out and return to him void. Proverbs 26 and 27 is meant for the wicked, trans, and anyone else that plans to cause you harm. God has redeemed you, called you by his name and protects you. Again, God bless you and continue to obey God, leaving all the consequences to him. Listen, I am so encouraged by uh, things like this. I praise God for these men of God. Now, listen, my time is about up, but I got to say something to you tonight. We're going to have a mighty service here at the upper room, but this is the last Thursday night, Brother Gary, I believe in a while. This is my third Thursday night where I was not able to be here. I am in Memphis, Tennessee. By the time you see this, I will be at uh, the April meeting, excuse me, in Memphis, Tennessee of the Church of God in Christ. And I'm doing what Paul did. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 18 and verse 18, and Paul uh, after this tarried there yet for a little while. Then he took his leave uh, of the brethren and sailed to unto Syria with Priscilla and Aquila, having shown his head in Sancria. For he had a vow, that is, he was under the vow of the Nazareth, and he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews when they, when they desired him to tarry a longer time with them. He consented not. But he said to them that he had to bid them farewell because in verse 21, he says, I've got to keep this feast, which is at Jerusalem. And just as Paul had to be in Jerusalem, I am in Memphis, Tennessee. But this coming Sunday, I will be at the upper room, the Lord willing. And next Thursday night, we will be in place. Now, look. I want you to join us here tonight, though, at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, for the Word of God is going to be preached with power and authority. I thank God that he's given us a deep bench and given us many preachers and teachers who can stand with me and enable me to be a blessing to you and to carry on the Word of God as we preach God's truth everywhere that we go. So join us tonight right here. At the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ for Bible study. Whether it's me or one of our associates, they're going to be delivering the word of the Lord. And don't give up on me. Next Thursday, we will be in place. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you.